Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the 3rd and 20 Dynasty Podcast. I'm JT, joined by the usual crew of Jake, Lunas, and Frank. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of still where we've been, but we're only a couple weeks from the draft. We've got a nice three-round mock draft coming at you guys. We're going to do our normal segments, but I guess we'll start out with how, how's everyone doing? How's everyone today? Fairer than you. Well, that was me. <laughs> Bully. Good, JT. Thank you. <laughs> Frank said Listen, he was coming I, at me. <laughs> I can't wait for this mock because, oh my god, the board fell perfectly. I can't <laughs> believe the guys that fell to me. <laughs> JT was mad Frank. disrespectful once again. Uh, it's not disrespectful. It's the truth. I'm trying to wake you it's guys up. It's disrespectful. Show you guys the light. But we Let's get, get into it, get though. There. Yeah. Um, real quick, we get, we do have some news and notes. Um, Julian Edelman did retire. Sad. Hurts me as a Patriots fan. I got I got a background, actually, and naturally I put it right behind me where I block it. Uh, obviously not meant for this stuff. But, yeah, Julian Edelman retires. I mean, I don't know if anyone really expected him to maintain fantasy relevancy after all the reports about his knee were coming out. So now the Patriots are going to rely on the likes of Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, and Jacoby Myers as their wide receivers. Oh, and Nikhil Harry, who could forget, uh, along with Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry. I don't really know what kind of fantasy impact this has. Does anyone have a strong opinion on who should, who you should buy, who you should sell from this? I mean, does this? I saw on Twitter someone was saying, "Oh, this helps Jacoby Myers." Like, hey, I don't even think it helps Jacoby Myers. Like. I don't think anyone was really expecting Julian Edelman to be a threat, and if he is, I feel like you shouldn't be buying that player anyway. But we did go over a little while ago about how Jacoby Myers could be a, a potential third-year breakout. He did fit that second type of case for a third-year breakout receiver that we looked at. So, like, I don't think this necessarily helps or hurts his, his value, but... Maybe do you guys like do you feel more confident in Myers like and even I guess going into the draft is Jacoby Myers to you guys still a buy? What what are you guys thinking around that? I think I still like Myers the same as I did two weeks ago. Like it, it doesn't it doesn't make a huge difference for me. I wasn't really anticipating Edelman to like take this crazy role because I knew even just a couple weeks ago they were saying he was still injured. So um, I kind of view him the same. I feel like. It's kind of all dependent on like what they do at quarterback with the draft coming up. That'll have more of an impact to me with Myers than this uh, Edelman retirement. I I just think it's whoever wins out between Jacoby Myers and Kendrick Bourne will be the wide receiver you kind of want to own from this team. Um, not anything against Nelson Aguilar, but I just think with Cam Newton starting as quarterback, you're probably not going to see Nelson Aguilar getting a lot of deep passes, which is kind of his game. And then Who's to say what the Patriots do at quarterback? I, I don't know. I saw Mel Kuyper just came out with a mock draft today with Justin Fields going there. I would absolutely love that. I just don't see that actually happening, him going that late. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think it's a toss-up between Kendrick Bourne and Jacoby Myers. One of them will have relevancy if that's like a flex play or maybe your wide receiver three certain weeks. Um, other than that, I, I don't think it really affects anything. Real quick, though, JT. Almost more of like a yes or no question. Because the, the Patriots, they don't have a third round pick, but they do have a first and a second. Do they come out with one of those picks with a receiver, yes or no? I hope not, just because of their track record of drafting wide receivers. I, uh, Maybe. I, I did see in like a different mock draft, like Elijah Moore ends up there, which I wouldn't be upset about. But I... I find it hard to believe that they're going to do that, especially considering that there's a chance they do trade up for a quarterback. They might only have one um, pick in the first three rounds, and then afterwards I don't really care. Like, if you get drafted in the fourth round, I don't really think you're much of a threat to Jacoby Myers or Kendrick Bourne. I was coming away with, like, the same feeling, right? Because it just felt like the Patriots, they addressed a lot of their major needs in free agency Instead of they having to rely everyone. on the draft. Yeah. yeah. They, they bought everyone. I mean, think about it. They brought in two tight ends. They brought in two more receivers. I mean, are you really drafting? So I, I wouldn't be surprised, but I think you're right in that. Because, like, Mel Kuyper in that mock draft you referenced, they had him trading up to 10. 
I mean, since they have pick 15, which is higher than the Bears at 20, the Washington football team at 19, like all these other teams that are rumored to trade up, I mean, they just naturally have a little bit more firepower to get into some of those top picks if one of those QBs fall. Yeah, but my, my whole thing is not to get, you know, we're going all, a little bit off on a tangent, but, like, if they're trading up to pick Mac Jones, I'm going to be so upset. I, I know you That'd love be the Mac funniest Jones. thing ever. Yeah, I know you love Mac Jones, but, like, if we're trading up to get Mac Jones, what are we doing as an organization? I just, I don't believe in him. I I don't think he's the key to, to the Patriots. Yeah, keep down. <laughs> keep down. <laughs> oh, I will. I will doubt. I just have a bad feeling, but I'm hoping John Elway manages to snag him up before <laughs> before Belichick gets to him. Um, Mac Jones is the perfect John Elway quarterback. He's yeah. big, he's tall, and that's about all he cares about. So, you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah, the, the only other main news slash notes that we've got going on is uh, today, actually, as we're recording this, James Conner did sign with the Cardinals. We had a big internal debate about that one. <laughs> I Personally, I think it doesn't really hurt Chase Edmonds as much as people would have you believe. I did see a lot. A lot of people, more people than I expected on Twitter being like, oh my god, this ends Chase Edmonds' RB1 season. I think you were delusional if you thought Chase Edmonds was going to be an RB1. Like, like, you know, pro football focus, Matthew Berry, they're all coming out saying Chase Edmonds is a running back one. In what world would Chase Edmonds have been a running back one? Like, who thought he was going to be the bell cow back? Like, I just think it does help Chase Edmonds if you're realistically looking at this. Um... You know, James Conner is okay, but he, he's not a bell cow really either. Like, they're just going to split carries, and I think that's kind of the best scenario for um, Chase Edmonds, unless they draft a, another running back in the draft. But I just I don't think the Cardinals will. That's my own personal yeah, thought. I, I feel like for James Edmonds' owner, the ultimate kind of biggest fear was them drafting a running back in, like, the first, like, four rounds. So if this move is any kind of indication that there's a lesser chance that that happens then it's a plus for chase Edmonds. because if i'm chase i'm not very scared of james Conner. Okay. okay okay so i'm not i don't think james connor is going to have a running back one season i don't think that chase Edmonds was going to have a running back one season without um them signing anybody I agree with you guys that this is a better case for Chase Edmonds than if they were to go out and draft a running back high in the draft. No doubt, this is a you know one-year play, veteran running back, probably on a low-money deal, trying to prove it after a very injury-prone season. There's no doubt about it, but I don't think this is a great scenario for either of these guys. I think it kind of kills both of their values, honestly, because they're going to split this backfield, I feel, 50-50 as long as... Um, you know, Connor stays healthy, which is a big if for him. But if they're both healthy, I could definitely see this being a 50 50 split. Both guys getting, you know, seven to 10 touches a game. And that's about it with neither putting up any real viable fantasy production. So I think it kind of kills both of them, if we're going to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I don't see it working out any other way where, you know, either Connor or Edmonds really takes the bell cow role here. All right, real, real quick question, and I think I can, we can move on. It's not like a huge dynasty impact thing. Would you guys rather own James Conner, Chase Edmonds, or Kenyon Drake? Which of those three do you want? Oh, my God, just shoot me. <laughs> James <laughs> Conner is Connor's pretty easily third there for me. James Conner is third? <laughs> James Conner is third there. He's, he's, yeah. first. he's first for me. Over Chase Edmonds? Dude, Chase Edmonds is a nothing back. Why don't we understand this? Yeah, and so many people went happened. after James <laughs> Conner this offseason. He was getting not... a whole lot of suitors. Okay, the reason is because, one, no one pays running backs. So just to get a, a contract in general is no, hard. No, so... even, guy, even guys like Kenyon Drake got pursued way earlier and got a way better contract. Yes, yeah, but because James Conner was also hurt. He got turf toe. Um, That's part of why I don't like him. I don't court. like injured, washed up running backs. Sorry. I mean, I think <laughs> Bold I'm gonna take I'm gonna take both Arizona guys before I ever touch Kenyon Drake. So that's yeah, but just, I think that's I think just we're looking fact. at the wrong question here. The question shouldn't be which one you'd rather have more because everyone is gonna say Chase Edmonds because Chase Edmonds just realistically has a has a more realistic chance of points 
but at the same time, his price is higher. So would you rather have Chase, you know, give up a second round pick in 2022 for Chase Edmonds or a third round pick in 2022 to get James Conner? That one every single time. You mean the second one. I just... Yeah, I'm gonna take James really Conner for a third. Though, but... I don't really want to do either. <laughs> yeah. JT, I no, I want to hear. But... I want to hear your take here, JT. Which one would you rather? If you had to pick one, which so, one are Frank, you doing? Frank, well, you you are saying though that if both are equal value, you'd rather have Edmonds. I I don't I don't want. If I have Edmonds, which I had in the league, I'm selling him. I I dude, I I did this Cardinals analysis. We came out pretty recently on the on the tube. Um, that running back group sucked they were bad and chase like chase evans he made some good plays and he was a good receiver but it's not like he was a great receiver by any stretch of the imagination i my whole thing with this move i think people are looking way too far into it this is a team that if the board did not fall well from them for them in the draft would have been absolutely screwed at the running back position and if you're a team that is looking to win football games you can't just come out here and expect, oh, well, Najee Harris is going to be on the board in our second round, or Travis Etienne, or one of these guys we're looking at. Because what if? What if someone else just jumps in front of you? They know you need a running back. This, the, the signing A.J. Green, this move, does not mean, to me at least, that they're going to be out of the running for a running back or a receiver. It's just now you have some guys that you can rely on if shit hits the fan in the draft, so you're not pigeonholing yourself into, oh, we need this, this or die. And there goes our Super Bowl chances. That's what I think this move means. We we don't have the official figures yet of the James Conner contract, right? Like we don't know how it's much. It's a he's one getting. year deal. It's like it's, it's a one even... year deal, but I don't know the the value's not out yet. No. What it's gonna be like one year four million. I, so I would even million. say I yeah, was that might say even be less. Stretch. I was gonna say two. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's it's not. It's definitely not over five. Um. It's going to be an insanely cheap deal. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like we're spending a lot of time on these two running backs who will have, like, flex relevancy. Like, um, to answer your question, Frank, I honestly don't want to buy either. But, like, if, you know, push comes to shove, I'd rather give up the 2022 third and just get James Conner because I feel like I'm giving up less. Like, I don't really trust anything about the 2022 third. So, whatever. But... I, either deal I don't really want to do but let's move on now to our main main section um, we're talking a three round super flex mock draft uh, tight end premium actually I should add like usual um, we haven't done this in a little while and you know a, a lot has changed recently we've gotten the pro pro um, pro day results we've got combine testing and all that stuff um, you know, some draft capital projections have changed, so we figured we might as well do it. It might be our last one before uh, the actual draft. So, Frank will be, you know, we'll, you'll be able to see it for you guys. Um, so, yeah, let's just get into it. We're doing a snake draft order where the order starts Lunas, myself, then Frank and Jake, and then we'll flip it, and we'll just go through those three rounds, and we'll try and explain our picks to you guys. So, Lunas, kick it off. Who are you drafting? Pick 101. Trevor Lawrence. Again, guys, don't overthink it. Like, I feel like sometimes, like, when there's, like, too much time before the draft, people just start overthinking, switching up rankings. It, you can you can debate two and three, but take Trevor Lawrence at one. That's, don't overthink this pick. All right. Well, that puts me at 102. And it's the guy that I've been banging my fist on the table for a while now. I, I actually believe if I have pick 101, I'd be willing to trade down and just see what I could get from the 102 owner. Um, anything of significant value, I think I might consider doing it and just take Justin Fields at 102. At 102, I want Justin Fields. I just think he does everything right. Um, you know, plus he does have that. Not that Trevor Lawrence doesn't really have the rushing ability, but Justin Fields is more so of a runner. Uh, I think he had like a 440, 44440, um, which is pretty insane for a quarterback. Uh, and it's not like he doesn't have an arm. Yeah, I'd say he has a much better arm than the likes of Lamar Jackson. So he's kind of just got it all. Like He might not be great at any of them, but he's very good at most aspects of being a quarterback, and he's just someone that I've been trying to hype up for a while now. Um, moving on, Frank, who are you taking at 103? 
Um, hold on, I'm just trying to get this. All right, I think I got it. You'll be able to see just the pics over my face here. Um, uh, dude, I, I just recently, I love Kyle Pitts, man. Kyle Pitts is so good. It, and I kind of explained it to Jake. I might have said it on the pod before. It's like, if I need to take one player, let's just say my team sucks, or even if my team is good, like, I need one player, aside from Trevor Lawrence, right? that is going to have the best chance of wearing a gold jacket at the end of his career. I don't care about trade value or any of that bull crap. I am just going to take the most talented player. It's Kyle Pitts. You can make the argument for Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith. To me, it's Kyle Pitts. Like, I, I would, I, there are a lot of picks here. I was between Jamar Chase, Zach Wilson, obviously I Kyle Pitts because I took him. Trey Lance is around there. But it's just at the end of the day, strongest prospect, Kyle Pitts. That's fair. I can't really fault you, especially when we're talking tight end premium. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily what I would have done there, but I don't really disagree with it uh, too much. Um, Jake, you're up 104. All right, 104. I went with the guy that I have been in love with since the very beginning. We're, we're a big fan of his on the pod. It's Trey Lance. Um, I have him as my QB2. I've recently just hopped him over Zach Wilson. Um, I, I just really think his ceiling and his skill set really fits this uh, today's NFL where he can move outside the pocket. He has a cannon arm. He really showed out at his pro day and just launched some rockets down the field. But, you know, I, I just think his upside is just so great. And he's going to be a top six, seven pick at worst, um, so if not pick four uh, in the actual NFL draft. So taking him at uh, four in a rookie draft is the sweet spot for me. Let me let me do a quick poll before we move on here. How many of you guys would take Trey Lance over Jamar Chase in a super flex league? Those would be the two people I'm picking. I mean, aside from you, yeah. Jake, you did it. You did I, it. <laughs> I, at the end of the day, that's going to come down a landing spot for me. I, the only thing is, if Trey Lance ends up on the Panthers or the 49ers, I'd go Trey Lance. Any other landing spot, I'm going Jamar Chase. I don't really care where Jamar Chase goes. He could go to the Lions. He could go to the Dolphins. If Trey Lance isn't on the Panthers or the 49ers, just give me Jamar Chase. Okay, okay. Here's my reasoning behind this, and just hear me out. Quarterbacks that are taken in the you know top 10 of the actual NFL draft just significantly hold their value throughout their first two to three seasons in the NFL. You take guys like you know Sam Darnold, and you take guys like... You know, even Tua after a bad rookie year. You, those are guys that still have a significant dynasty value, even though they really haven't done much in the actual NFL. Now you take a, on the opposite side, you look at wide receivers here. You look at guys like Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs, who were the, you know, the top two receivers off the board last year, and now their value has significantly fallen after just one season. So you guys can you know, debate all you want, and you know, maybe they have a second-year breakout. I don't know. That's not what this point is. But I'm saying if you... And the opposite here is also, you look at guys like Justin Herbert, who probably fell to the back end of your your rookie draft last year just because, you know, people had questions about him. If you took him, it you just, you know, gained so much value because realistically, if you do a redraft, he's going to go probably 101. I would assume 101 in a redraft of last year's rookie draft. So the quarterbacks just in a super flex league, their value retains and they're the most valuable position on the field so taking him over arguably you know the most talented receiver since julio i think just dynasty value wise is the right move i i kind of get that jake but also from the analytical standpoint if we're talking jamar chase who has the all the analytics like the breakout age the bmi if he gets top 15 draft capital jamar chase is just as likely to succeed if not no he's more likely to succeed than trey lance because if you look in the past, right, uh, I don't I don't remember who tweeted this out. So sorry that I'm not getting credit. But the four players that were drafted in the top 15 since 2012 who met those criteria were Sammy Watkins, who, who was a miss, but then Mike Evans, OBJ, and Mari Cooper. So that's three out of four were huge hits. So we're putting Jamar Chase in that kind of category. And... That's just why, I don't know. I just think Jamar Chase would have better success in that regard. 
I, I have a question to you guys. Not that I think this will be Trey Lance, because I think Trey Lance will be good. So we're probably going to have, what, like five QBs go in the top 12 in real life? Somewhere there? Is that fair? Pro- probably. Depends on where Mac Jones. Top 12, yeah. top 15. Yeah, it probably depends on where Kellen yeah. Martin goes. <laughs> it's not very frank. <laughs> <laughs> Might be six. Yeah. Okay. How many times have we seen, or like, wh- how high of a chance do you think there is that all f- out of all five QBs, there isn't one huge buzz? There's, I mean, there will be. Statistically, likely there's, 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 there's there two. will be. Yeah, like, yeah so I'm no saying statistically, there there's usually like one or two with the top five, or when they go okay, down. Okay, but I mean, if you look at the receivers, there's always a bust first round receiver as well. So yeah. like, you're like, it's the same argument here. But. But the thing is, right, it's it's a lot easier to predict which receivers will be good just based on all of the prior things I said. Like, there's no real kind of statistical thing that you could look at with quarterbacks and be like, oh, yeah, this guy's guaranteed not to bust. Like, like quarterbacks, it's way harder to determine which guy's going to be good, which guy's not. I have Correct. a very and strong think... feeling Jamar Chase will be good. I'm not positive on Trey Lance. Well, that's why they hold their value because, like, if – like this off season, right? Two, you wanted to go buy Tua, right? He did not have a good rookie year by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. It wasn't anywhere close to, you know, Justin Herbert or even, you know, Joe Burrow before he got hurt. So like, his value was still what a late first. Like his value fell from what a, a you know a high end super flex first round pick to a late first round pick in super flex. So he retained. I mean, he lost some value, but he didn't significantly lose value. Meanwhile, a guy like Jerry Judy, what are you paying for Jerry Judy right now? You had to t- take him at probably 106 last year. Like, what did what is he worth now? Probably yeah, like, but uh, again, the, really those second, are those yeah. are guys that you kind of want to avoid. It's the Devonte Smith. That like he's kind of in that oh, Devonte Smith off. range. It's it's true. <laughs> we, we know we it's know you're true. avoiding Devonte Smith. Not only that, but like. Just, just look a couple years ago. Daniel yeah, it's Jones... like the Rashad Batemans. You know? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> da- da- Daniel Jones all was right. picked. Daniel Jones was all picked right, let's six. Move on. Daniel let's Jones move was picked on. six, and we've seen how, he, how much value he's lost. All right, yeah, moving right, on. Right, but Daniel Jones was wasn't a whatever, whatever. He was anyway. picked. Honestly, six. we should we should look at the quarterback success rate drafted by old ass GMs and see if that has any correlation to. to Probably does. Or... <laughs> Probably does. Probably. Right. Anyways, back to the mock. Uh, 105, I just went with the guy that we were we were talking about. I took Jamar Chase here. I think he's you know the most talented wide receiver to come out since Julio Jones probably. So I just think he – I'm not going to say can't miss, but I think he is a, a very good prospect here. That was just very funny, though, that you just had to do all that <laughs> defending of Trey Lance. Listen, that, that was, listen. That was, that was a nice back-to-back. Trey Lance <laughs> and Jamar Chase is a nice back-to-back cut. I mean, listen, like, they're both fantastic prospects, but, like, the 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 ceiling of, you know, a top-end quarterback is just so great here. Like, you look what it, the value is not to trade for a Justin Herbert, even compared to, like, an A.J. Brown. It, they're significantly different, and they're both very young and, and very good at their own position. So That would probably be my four and five pick also. I just don't know which order I would choose. Wow. All right, well, at 106, I'm going to be taking the guy that seems to be getting no love, and that's Zach Wilson. Um, this was a guy yeah. I was considering at 103, so I felt like it made too much sense to take him at 106. Realistically... Coming into the mock, I was looking at landing Javante Williams at this pick, but I didn't. I, I don't know why I didn't expect Zach Wilson to be on here. I, I for some reason I just didn't think he was going to be there at 106. So I was just like kind of a little shocked. It's just kind of that whole argument that Jake was saying with Trey Lance. When you're picking 106 and you got a guy that might be going number two overall, it looks like there's just too much upside. To, to take Javante Williams, who a lot of people think is going to be a second-round running back prospect over him. Even though I love Javante Williams, it, at the end of the day, you, you do, like, I'm a film guy. You have to take the analytics into a little bit of perspective, the positional value a little bit into perspective. So I think Zach Wilson just made too much sense for me at 106 here. Can, can Completely you agree. To you there? Uh, I, dude, the board. <laughs> the, board the board, the board, the board. <laughs> I, I will say that I, I was really heavily considering Javante Williams and Devontae Smith. Those are the only other two prospects that were that I was considering there. 
Yeah, and I'm up now at 107, and to be honest, I kind of hate what you guys did to me. <laughs> I don't like the board, what just happened. I was kind of the hoping, board! Yeah, I was kind of hoping I would have the choice of uh, a Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts, and that running back would go before me, but now you're making me choose between the running backs, and I've been flip-flopping a lot, been really wishy-washy on this. Uh, the only thing I've been consistent on is keeping Najee Harris low. So I'm going to go and I'm going to pick Travis Etienne here. Um, landing spot likely will change this for me. I'm not committed to my top running back yet. It's just I don't love any of them, but I feel like 107, you, there should be a running back off the board by this point. So I'll take Travis Etienne here. Lunas, you're up. Yeah, you kind of made this decision a little bit easier for me. Um, <laughs> taking Etienne, I, I took... At let me pull it up. At 108, I took my RB1, Javante Williams. Um, I feel if you can get Javante at 10, if I got Javante at 108 in my rookie draft, I'd be really happy. Um, because I think they're still very good. It's obviously JT is right with these running backs, some of them are so close to a landing spot, it's going to be really important to how like my final ranking will be of them. Um, because running backs are really dependent on their landing spot, but uh, to an extent, but. Javante 108, I would take any day of the week. And then at 109, I took Jalen Waddle, who is my wide receiver too. Um, I know like people would think like, oh, Devontae Smith. I personally just have Jalen Waddle slightly ahead, and Devontae is kind of like a 2B or 3 wide receiver in my rankings. So uh, that I'm taking Jalen Waddle there. I think he's going to be an insane playmaker in the NFL. But I would understand if someone else, if they preferred Devontae Smith, would go Smith there. Did you see the reports today that NFL scouts have uh, Jalen Waddle is going to go really fucking one. early? Yeah, pe- people are saying they yeah. don't think Jalen Waddle makes it out of the top ten. Yeah, I saw. I, I, saw don't, I don't think so either. I saw him going six to the Dolphins. I think, which is. I think it depends on the crazy. team because, it, I mean, if you need a guy, it's like Ruggs last year. If you want a guy to take the top off a of defense and stretch a defense vertically, I mean, that's that's. Jalen Waddle, right? There's no one better in the draft. There probably hasn't been anyone, even including Ruggs, in like the past three seasons, it's as good as Jalen Waddle at doing that. But I still don't think that necessarily translates to elite level fantasy production, um, just historically speaking. But then again, I like I was never high on Ruggs. I do like Jalen Waddle. Not not as high as you picked him, but I still like I would take Jalen Waddle if he fell to me. Yeah, I, 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 he's another one that I'm tossing in back and forth uh, on where I rank him. Sometimes I have him at like wide receiver three. Sometimes I have him at wide receiver six. It's kind of a jumble. Although I do wish Lewis didn't take him because again, now I'm in the same spot at one ten, where I this, think I this, just, this is this, this is this is the most disrespectful pick. It is of this not entire at mock. all. It's not at this all. pick again. Again, this is where I trade down. <laughs> let, let me let me have my piece first. Let me have my piece first. I'll get you later for one of your picks, Lunas. But at one ten, <laughs> this is likely somewhere where I'm gonna trade down, and I'm just gonna try and pick up a couple seconds and get the guys that I really want. But like, if you want my true belief in what I believe actually should be taken here, it's Terrace Marshall, wide receiver from LSU. The one not named Jamar Chase. I just think he's got all, uh, you know, there's been disappointing pro day tests and everything with, like, Rashad Bateman coming in much smaller than I expected him to be. Uh, Tarish Marshall didn't do that. Um, he doesn't necessarily check all the boxes that the analytic people look for, but he, he just seems really good. I mean, there's a question uh, Fred kind of pointed out to us. Uh, he does seem to take play out, plays off, although I think that's also a knock against Jamar Chase as well. Maybe the LSU wide receiver coaches just aren't really getting on them about that. I don't really care too much about that. Um, he just has what I believe is going to be the prototypical alpha. Uh, I was saying earlier he's what people thought Denzel Mims would be. I've been hyping him up for a while now, so I'm going to stick to my word. I'm going to practice what I preach, and I'm going to take Terrace Marshall at 110. One thing I will say, JT... One of our listeners, Joe Herbert. Shout out, Joe. We love you, Joe. Shout shout out, um, Joe. <laughs> he did say in the comments that apparently the, the LSU receivers are coached to take plays off. I don't nec- I, I, I haven't seen a source on that. I did look it up. Um, so, like, I don't necessarily know how truthful that is. 
to be completely honest, I wouldn't be terribly shocked. But for me, it's it, it's even more than just taking plays off. It's it's just kind of stretches of games that he gets minimized for, and just you talk about a terrible blocker. He is an awful blocker. But one thing I will say to you, JT, defending your pick is that I mean, you look at his his profile. I mean, the guy is an absolute stud. He's now he does have the top end highlights. Um, he comes from a great school. He's got NFL, you know, legacy in his family, so he does check a whole lot of boxes. Yeah, uh, I, I realistically, I, I don't think he's going to, like, I think he probably would have been available a few picks back, probably two of twos, roughly where he's likely going to get drafted. I don't have pick two of two. Um, and I just like him better than these guys. So in, in an actual rookie draft, I'd probably move down and pick him. But I just like him a lot better than the other guys listed above him. Um, yeah, but to be completely honest, though, if Marshall goes in that, the first that was round where of the I was draft, go next. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, say Javante goes really late second, or someone else in this top end. Let's say Trey Lance just falls to like pick twenty somehow, which I don't think is going to happen. But it could happen. What if he gets bumped down or something? So, I don't, yeah, it's crazy right now. I don't think it's the craziest thing, even though I'm not a huge Terrace Marshall guy. Uh, I saw a mock where he goes to the Chiefs, and I just, I think that oh will, un- yeah, that'll unfairly, <laughs> it'll unfairly skyrocket his value. Like he'll go from, you know, he'll be up in the mid first round probably at that point, which I think is hyping him a little too much. There definitely is still risk involved with Terrace Marshall, but one ten, I don't have a problem taking him. The thing is, like, I, I did see mocks where Rashad Bateman went at, like, 108 range. I think that could easily be replaced with Terrace Marshall if he does go to the Chiefs or the Packers or something. Yeah, exactly. All right, what's what's your pick, Frank? Well, this is a classic. Uh, oh, my God, I can't believe that guy was there. Uh, it's Devontae Smith. No, this is a guy I, I love Devontae Smith still. I, I know I'm on the island on this podcast where... Um, Devontae so Smith not is on the island. I still, I would have taken him. You're not on an island. I would have taken I'll... him before he went at 111, but like. Yeah, I probably would have taken him Yeah, but him you didn't. I haven't had a pick since pick five. Okay, I would have picked him at pick five. What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just, I, I don't know. I love Devontae Smith. I've liked him for a while. I've said it a thousand times. He's my Wilson. Um, if I could snag him at the end of the first round, I, I really like that kind of value. He's the kind of guy who's just, I understand the whole analytics bullshit, the BMI stuff, I understand it. So if you want to draft Jamar Chase over him, go ahead, but I don't <laughs> think that that, <laughs> shut you, screw you, JT. Um, <laughs> but I don't think that th- that you should be overreacting to the point where he, where you're starting to take the bait over him. So that that's just my opinion. You saying uh, Bateman's debate? Uh, I've I've sewered uh, Devonte Smith long enough. Everyone knows where I stand on this one. Um, Jake, what do you got? Uh, I'm up again at 112, and I'm taking Mac Jones. Um, I'm not the biggest Mac Jones fan personally, but my rule of thumb is if a quarterback's taken in the first round of an NFL draft, he should not fall outside the first round of the uh, of your rookie draft in a super flex league. Just simple as is. Like like I said, they're going to retain value. Like at best, you're going to end up with a Justin Herbert situation where you know pick one eleven, one twelve last year in your rookie draft. Now he's easily worth you know five times that. Um, or worst case scenario, you know he's worth a mid second like Darnold is and or Daniel Jones is, and you don't lose that much value. So that's why I think it's a safe pick here at one twelve. All right, and then we're going to flip around then to the second round. Uh, 201, who you got? I took the bait here, Rashad Bateman. I just love him. I know he didn't measure as well as, as people would have liked. He only measured about 6 foot and a little over 6 foot and about 210. Um, people thought he was going to measure closer to 6'2", 220, but I still love him. He was an absolute alpha at, at Minnesota last season and the year before, like, I just really believe in him. I just think he's a guy that's going to come into the league and be like a Keenan Allen type wide receiver. You know, maybe not super flashy, but just quietly put up over a thousand yards and a couple scores, and he's going to be in that wide receiver one conversation. I just think he's a steady as they come here. That's yeah. fair. Um, yeah. uh, who's up at 202? Oh, that's Frank. That's me. 
And no one's got any thoughts on Bateman? No one's got any thoughts on I just, I just wanted to know, okay, so I guess, because I don't want to spoil who you're taking at 202, but I wanted to hear why taking Bateman over that pick. Oh, well, I took Najee Harris, so Jake, if you want to... Okay, I mean, listen, these are the guys that I had at, you know, 12 and 13 on my board, respectively, and I that's exactly where we were sitting at, 13 and 14. Um, but, so we were pretty much on exactly on what I thought would happen, and I don't know, I just, Najee Harris, just like, I know people are have him going like 101 in like st- uh, non-super flex leagues and all that, but... I don't know. I just didn't love it. He's playing behind like an unreal offensive line. There's so many weapons there. Like that offense is just OP as fuck. Like I don't know. I just I, give me the minis- guy in Minnesota who dominated the Big Ten. All right. Well, well what were you gonna say, JT? Yeah. So first off, Rashad Bateman. He did kind of drop down my board a little bit just because of. I'm interested, JT. Who would you have taken? Because I know you kind of like are it, not crazy about either. It wouldn't have been either of them actually. It would have been the guy I would take later on. But um, wow. oh well, it's actually I'm I'm the next pick up. But but it, Rashad Bateman would have been the pick right after. To be fair, I, it's just like yeah, just saying these picks are on the screen where oh. we're at, and they can see a couple of picks <laughs> oh, okay. ahead. So it's oh, like, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm taking, I'm taking Rondell Moore at two o three if we're just <laughs> chugging along here. But now we got to backtrack everything. So 201, Rashad Bateman, 202, uh, Najee Harris, 203, Rondell Moore. My thing about Rashad Bateman is he tested worse than I thought. I, I just don't think he fits the alpha profile anymore. I do still like his catch radius and everything. Like, he's got long arms. He's able to go up and get it. I do think Okay, but, actually... like, go ahead. hear me out. My, my comparison for him is uh, Keenan Allen. Like, do you consider Keenan Allen an alpha wide receiver? Like, that he kind consistently of. puts up wide receiver one numbers, but like he's not like the flashy DeAndre Hopkins that's gonna go catch Hail Marys yeah. over people. Yeah, but my thing, so so yeah, that's, that's not bad. That's like his his peak is probably Keenan Allen at this point. Like, there's a point in time where I truly believed like Rashad Bateman could have been Devonte Adams or um, why am I blanking? Des Bryant. Like I thought he was in that category of wide receiver, and then learning he's actually like almost two inches shorter and like 20 pounds lighter it, it does knock him i hate to be the tinder girl jt over here but i'm swiping no, you are. the wrong direction you don't hate to be it you love it you know you, love it. you <laughs> <Yeah>. enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if i got my pick and i'm swiping i don't know if i'm swiping on rashad bateman i don't really know how tinder works to be honest but um all right where was I going? Wow, JT, so, so then, you don't know how Tinder co- works. I, I'm sorry. I was just, I, that wasn't me trying to do for flex. fantasy football. Th- that wasn't what are you trying, trying to say? To what are you trying to say, JT? I wasn't trying to flex that. I thought that was going to be like Belichick <laughs> saying like, like snap face and face chat or whatever. Like I just don't know how to <laughs> All right, let me go. Let me go. I took Najee Harris yeah, um, hold on. at 202. I, go ahead first, but I've got comments on Najee. Yeah, J- JT thinks Najee's a bust. Apparently all you guys do as well. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't think he's going to us. I'm not necessarily the biggest Najee Harris fan in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but I would definitely not let him slip outside of the first round in a rookie draft. So I guess 202 isn't too far out of that. Um, I, you know, coming into this, I did not expect to pick Najee Harris at 202, to be honest. Um, I was looking at Rondell Moore and Diami Brown here. But, you know, I was considering Najee at 111. I just had Devontae Smith ranked higher. So now I get to take his Alabama teammate at 202. And even though, like Jake said, you got people saying, oh, he's going to go 101, and and a whole lot of the consensus would be, oh, this might be the pick of the draft. I actually think someone else got the best value pick in the draft over me. Ooh. Did it happen yet? No, it did not. In, and in by the direction. way, Frank, I'm with you. I probably would have taken Najee at 112. Um, and then, like, those receivers right after. Or Mac Jones and Bateman. So, again, I'm going to harp on my, my Tinder girl JT about Najee, right? I have a lot of issues with Najee Harris. His, Frank, you mentioned did. before, his his uh, broken tackle rate. Um, but my thing is from, like a, like, a value standpoint, right? Like, Najee Harris is 23 already. Like, he's the same age as Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders. He's not, like, the same age as, like, Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift. He's the same age as Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs. Like... 
So, We've been in the league for, I mind you, now going on three years. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. But wouldn't you say so, that, like, when you get to the end of the first, like 112, 111, and even towards 202, like, at that point, isn't it worth that the cons? Like, do, at, at some point, doesn't his his overall profile and his upside outweigh all the cons? At, at some point, I just, I probably would have knocked him, like, a couple more picks down. Like, I don't hate it right here. Like, right here is it's fine for me. It, but it's just, I truly believe he's one of the most likely to be a bust. And if you're drafting him in the top five, top six picks in Superflex, I think you're taking a very risky chance on Najee Harris. Oh, well, yeah, we all agree you should yeah. not, like, top five yeah. at least. Like, top five is a bit ridiculous when you have insane quarterbacks, Kyle Pitts, and Jamar Chase. Yeah, top, but I, top eight I don't know if is, to me is kind of what. Top seven, eight, I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Touch consensus him. he's going like 105 and it's just yeah we're not a Najee Harris tough. podcast apparently but you well, do make move a good on, though, point JT, yeah. who'd you pick up at 203 yeah. sorry one second you make the good point though of like at this point risks probably are, are starting to diminish like you're at the end of the first round beginning second round it's not as big at 203 apparently it's on the screen I can't see it personally but I'm taking Rondell Moore here um I've actually moved him up despite him um testing smaller than we thought he was because to be honest Unlike Rashad Bateman, who I was kind of surprised came in two inches smaller and 20 pounds, like, I knew going in Rondell Moore was small. I didn't think Rondell Moore was going to be a big player. I've hyped him up before. Frank's hyped him up before. We're Rondell Moore believers. I think at this point, like, size doesn't matter right now. Like, I, I just think he can be an elite asset if, if the right NFL player, uh, right NFL team takes him because he could be used anywhere, basically. That's fair. This is this is the first pick in a couple picks I like. So it's from me and JT. Well, I mean, no, I'm, well, just, uh, no, I'm, I'm just talking so with you. I'm talking with you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna fight uh, you on this pick though. No, because because no, 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 next I'm, two picks are just horrible. I'm, I'm so it's fine. Fight I'm a huge on them. Oh, you guys are hating. I love these two picks. I think these are they're steals. so bad. They are so <laughs> bad. One it's a joke. One is good. One is good. One is no, it is these, horrible. These Both are of them are horrible. Great picks. Let the man talk. Let the man talk. <laughs> the greatest of picks. Um, so, <laughs> at 204, I took um, Percy Harvin. No, uh, his Cardarius Tony. Um, Percy Harvin? Put, put the clown the, face what? on him. Same, the same guy. Face same guy. <laughs> same guy. Clown face. Um, uh, so, I took Cardarius Tony. I think he's going to go late first, early second in the real NFL draft. And I just love his playmaking ability wherever he goes, especially if he goes to one of those late first-round teams like Green Bay or Kansas City. Oh, if he goes to Kansas City, JT, you are fucking done. You are done. You better You're pray. Talking, you literally just you described better pray Nicole Hardman. Go to Kansas City That's Nicole Hardman. That's the Marcus Robinson. Like, oh, my <laughs> that's like, Those are the same players. Kadarius Tony's not going to be better. He's going to be equal to those guys, which is nothing. That's nothing in my book. Miko Harmon played in the same conference and didn't put up nearly the numbers or the production that Cardarius Tony has. Cardarius so, Tony only has his senior year. There's no other production other than his senior year. All right, I got the clown face for you, JT. Thank you, Frank. I got it on him. Thank you. Put it on him. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, we got him. This is clown this. 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 I'm going to for taking Cardarius Tony at 204, and this kid got a pass for taking Terrace Marshall over Devontae Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> you didn't ask Smith for the clown on him. You, JT specifically yeah. requested it. Yeah, I requested the clown. Terrace Marshall is in another <laughs> stratosphere compared to Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony isn't worth anything, in my opinion. I don't even have him in my three rounds. We could have gone 20 more picks, and we Kadarius Tony still would have been on the board for me. Yeah, you gotta when know your draft. When, when, That's when the number Florida... one rule of dynasty football. Know your league. You, we weren't <laughs> picking them. Any of us weren't picking them. When Florida and LSU played most recently, I wonder who had the better game between the two. Uh, I, I mean, I if that's what we're doing, like we're gonna compare like that. You're just gonna set yourself up for failure. There's I wonder no who had a better game translate. against the most closest to an NFL defense most recently. How they both there, do against Alabama? There's no way. There's no way that. that All right, translates. let's move on. Let's move on. We gotta get through so, a lot more. Cardinals is two or four. No, um, keep the clown face on because the next one's just as bad. Oh no, this is this is I, another. I steal. disagree. I'm no, coming. I I'm coming team, yeah, too. I'm coming to team up with you now. I'm gonna have to Look switch at this. sides. Look at this. I'm taking Trey Sermon at 205. I have him as my RB four. 
Um, I like him a lot, and I know the Dynasty community is starting to heat up on him more as the draft comes closer. Physically, he's Good. a beast. Let, let someone take him. I'll take him. Dude, <laughs> give me him a 205. He did. I will gladly <laughs> take him. Um, I, I like him a lot. Like, I, I don't think it's like this insane, insane. Obviously, there's a drop off after RB3, but I don't think it's like an insane one. I think Trey Sermon can be really productive in the NFL. Physically, he's a beast. We saw what he did at the end of last season against really good defenses. I, If you can tell me you get into the RB4 at 205, I'll take that. And he's not a bad pass catcher. He's actually yeah. a good pass catcher. I've been How saying this forever now. How many backs that size do you see that? No, J- uh, JT, you were right. Like, I've been you on had him RB4 for a, for a while. while. Like, yeah. Dude, Trey Sermon, I even think that at 205, he, he might be able to go a little bit earlier than that. Have, have we passed your best value pick yet, Frank? Well, are we still no, waiting for I, the best? No, we're actually getting to one of the two best value picks back-to-back here. Oh. Um, with your pick at 206, actually. You, oh, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I called you a quote-unquote rat bastard <laughs> after you made this pick. <laughs> yeah, so I guess it's on the board, so it's not really a surprise. Um, I'm taking Diami Brown at 206. Him, along with Terrace Marshall and Rashad Bateman, have been obviously other than Jamar Chase. Those are the main wide receivers that I've just been championing. I think they're going to be the – like, I don't necessarily know if they're going to be as good as last year's draft class. Like, when you're talking Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, T. Higgins, Brandon Ayu, goes on and on, Claypool. Um, but I think there's a chance that they could be close in the same amount of value, same, same range value. And when we're talking Diami Brown out of UNC, who I think also could be an alpha wide receiver along with Terrace Marshall, um, you know, he's just that X kind of guy. I I love Diami Brown. I would have picked him at, you know, 203 probably if Rondell Moore wasn't on the board, but Rondell Moore was. Um, not to be that. I definitely would have taken Diami Brown over uh, Lunas's two scrub picks. Yeah, well... <laughs> I, I didn't know Jake was now on like the Cardarius Tony hate train. Everyone no, was on just the JT. Tony hate train. I've been on the Trey um, Sermon hate train for Sermon, a while. The Trey Sermon one's tough. I I got it's gonna come very much down a landing spot for Trey Sermon. I don't know, but Kadarius Tony, no way, get him out of here. God, give me Diami oh Brown my God. all day I'm over, going to be all day over. Unbearable. Once Cardarius Tony starts playing well, oh my lord! Oh, hey, listen, dude, when we, we, we play podcast this podcast that. back, guess who the only other person that didn't trash Cardarius Tony aside from you was? That's fine, Frank. Frank. You can, Frank I have not. Silence, I have been as quiet as a deafening. church mouse. He knows. Your silence is deafening, Frank. <laughs> You're with us oh, or against us, and you're apparently <laughs> I, was, I, I am going to feel bad for you guys. We need to I, I, Tony truthers are being persecuted. Anyone that's not against him is being persecuted. <laughs> we, we, All right, but let, can I can I go on for my pick here? Because yeah, hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, go you on. talk about a, a value bet. pick, Frank. Frank, can we get a podcast bet real quick though? What do we have to bet on Kadarius Tony as a podcast? Like, we can figure out something. Will he ever be a top twenty-four PPR receiver? No, no. I, the the issue though is like, all right, like five years from now, are we gonna hold this bet for five years? Like, how long is this bet gonna go on for? Okay, we'll will he finish we, over we should... under wide receiver fifty this next year? Oh. Uh, well, is what that is fair? Worse? What What do you consider worse, under or over? Like, like is under as in wide receiver forty-five? Is that under or is it? Yeah, no, no, that's him all doing right. well. All right, so over. Give me the over on that one. We'll, we'll put it set in stone. I'm saying he goes over. Lunas, I guess you're going to say under. Why are you 50? 50? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what you want to bet on that, Lunas. We're going to have our first podcast bet. I already um, have one with Jake about Joe Mixon and Miles Sanders. Oh, I did not know that. We, still have, to figure, <laughs> we still have to figure out what the wager is. All right. I guess I guess before the start of the season, we'll come out with a bunch of bets. Actually, okay. We can hold ourselves. We can think of it on draft night. But we can think yeah, of it yeah. on draft night. We yeah, that's something we're go. gonna. All right. Not to derail us too far. Sorry, Frank. What's your great value pick now? Oh, uh, this pick is the greatest. It is the greatest pick. It's Kellen Mond. Um, sorry, that was a terrible Donald Trump impression. Um, <laughs> dude, Kellen Mond, best pick in the draft. That's all I need to say. Two oh seven. All aboard, fellas. All aboard. <clears throat> that's, that's how you throw away your 207 pick, folks. 
Just saw it. <laughs> Screw you, JT. <laughs> JT, right you're out here just clowning everyone. You you have the worst draft out of anyone here. I love my team. <laughs> I love my team right now. <laughs> I'm, JT, I'm kind of, I'm JT kind of joking from all, with you, dude. JT. From Aside all the from the shins, fact that you had the best value, you know what? You no have, longer have the best value pick. He, you know, I he, revoked that title from you. JT. He is gonna have to eat so much shit <laughs> no, next I'm, season. I'm when like all these guys end up guys, being good. When Devontae Smith truth, ends up guys, being good. When Cardarius Tony ends up being Percy Harvin reincarnated. When Kelvin Mond ends up being Yo, let, let's let's speed run these these last because we are running a little all bit right, late right, on the right. seventh. So I'll, I'll, I'll retire if all that stuff happens. Jake, who you got? Two oh eight. <laughs> you retire from both. Two oh eight. I got one of my favorite, uh, you know, second round picks here. It's Elijah Moore out of Old Miss. I just love everything about him. I think he can, you know, you know, work all three levels of the field. He has a great release, great hands. I just, I just love the player. I think he's going to make a day one impact on whatever team ends up taking him. Um, underrated player at Ole Miss here. I thought that was one of the steals. I thought that was. Yeah, I was going to say we were going to speed run this, but no, Linus is right. Like Elijah Moore, I, I think he's one, of, he's one of those guys that he doesn't. He's not flashy necessarily. He has great stats, but when you watch the film, I, I don't think you're necessarily going to be overly impressed. But he's one of those dudes that just kind of checks every box, but on a very low key level. Same thing with Diamond Brown. I just think that Diamond Brown. You can get sold on like his physicality more than Elijah Moore. Yeah, I like the pick here. I think that was a very solid pick by Jake. Who's your two hundred nine, Jake? Two hundred nine is probably one of my favorite picks in the entire draft. Here, it's Tylen Wallace. I've been big on Tylen Wallace since you know I first started watching tape this off season. But he's a guy that I just see he he wins you know fifty fifty balls. He's a guy that he runs tough routes. He's a, a tough mental guy. He was a you know, Bolitnikov finalist two years ago prior to getting hurt. I just love everything about this guy. I think he's just getting back to where he was a few years ago after this injury. Um, I think he's going to start to shoot up boards based on where uh, he gets ended up getting drafted. So I'm, I'm happy to get him here at 209. All right, I'm at 210 here. And, and Jake, I actually really like those two picks you had because I was looking at both of those guys for 210, but there was one last guy I was looking at, and that was Michael I Carter know, right I there. know. I had him down originally, but I had I was hoping that. any of those three would fall to 212 so bad. You know, honestly, these three players, I'm not sure if they're going to – but even you go up a couple picks, like Kelamon, Diamond Brown, Trey Sermon, um, Rondell Moore – yeah, like just skip over Cardarius are... Tony. <laughs> no, even Cardarius Tony. I wanted to do that to clown Linus a little bit. But even Cardarius Tony, like, that's why this draft class is really nice at the receiver position. Isn't necessarily how top end it is, but like and not not even like the top end is great, right? You have two best receiver prospects to come out in a while. But uh, for a second year in a row, these these second round picks are just so nice. They're almost just Late firsts in a lot of drafts, right? You know, you compare it to to whatever the JJ or Sega Whiteside draft is. You know, you you have JJ or Sega Whitesides left, right, and center, um, but guys that might even be better than him. I know that was a terrible example to bring up, but Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I just compared every single one of these receivers to, to J.J. or Sega Whiteside <laughs> while trying to say that as a positive. Um, that lawn chair. Yeah, that that was a rip arena. I'm going to stop talking, but Michael Carter, good pick. I would have taken him at 205. Okay. Um, yeah, so here is um, someone else. I've just been wide receiver heavy in this draft other than my first two picks, um, and I'm sticking with it. I'm picking Seth Williams. Um, actually, believe it or not, a lot changed with Seth Williams for me. Tinder girl JT back at it again. It turns out he's... 21 and not 22 like just turned 21 which is a very big difference it might not sound like it is but when we're talking about wide receivers that 21 year old declare compared to 22 there's just statistically a lot better chance of a hit rate um i don't know i feel like i've hyped up seth williams before a lot he tested really well actually um i had him kind of close to the likes of tamori on terry but uh he just tested way better than terry he looked better when playing for auburn i just give me seth williams here I don't really have much else to say. All right, Looney. Okay. Uh, so I had two. I had two twelve and three hundred one. At two twelve, I took Kenneth uh, Kenneth Gainwell. I thought he was the next best running back uh, available 
which would be my RB6. Um, this is more just kind of a value pick. I know earlier in the offseason he was going mid-second rounds, like, and then a lot of the receivers have kind of gone up the board. So I just saw him there. I think he can have a pretty good role in the NFL. He's never going to be an every down back, but I think he can be a pretty good change of face guy. And I would take that at the last pick of the second round. I, I still like him as a prospect. And then this, okay, this receiver is interesting because I feel like he's just kind of fallen, like, out of sight, out of mind for just so many people. Like, I remember in the beginning of the offseason, yeah, Jake wants me to stick by about it. I remember in the beginning of the offseason, he was kind of being mentioned with, like, that Terrace Marshall tier. And I don't know, I, I didn't pay attention to his, uh, I didn't catch his test there, or do I remember it off the top of my head, but pretty much I'm talking about Amon Ross St. Brown. No one talks about him anymore, and in the beginning of the offseason, I feel everyone was way higher on him. So I was just kind of going down the receiver list. I was like, oh, shit, he's still available at 301. I'll take that flyer of Amon Ross St. Brown. He was still extremely productive. I know it's the Pac-12, and everyone's like, uh, the defenses there are kind of soft. But at 301, I'll take him. When earlier this offseason, he was like viewed as a definite second rounder. It's just other guys have moved up. Yeah, I like that pick a lot, Lynn. Do Not we know why he's fallen? Like, why no he's one just, really... He's just not as flashy as, as a lot of the other guys, so... That's fair. Um, yeah, that's I think thing. he's just not that alpha type of receiver, but I don't know. I think that he's going to rise again because I, it feels like he's going to be a second-round pick, and whether people like to admit it or not, USC has kind of been like a, a receiver. Um, like They've been pretty factory, good receivers. A one. Yeah. All right, JT, why don't you tell us about the Jag that you picked? Not nah, Jag, not nah, Jag. I'm going to I'm going to take a um, a text a play out of your textbook, right? Um my thing is we have I'm picking Javian Hawkins at pick 302, I believe I'm at, right? Yeah, 302. Yeah. And so my whole thing about Javian Hawkins is he's in that that wasteland. I've got like five running backs that just based on where they go I can really just move him around anywhere. Like, I'm not specifically tied to a certain player yet. But if I'm going with, like, who I like the most just based on a prospect, I, it's Javian Hawkins. He's moved up a lot for me. I, he's very speedy. Um, my only qualm against him is right now he's not great as a pass catching back, but I truly believe that he can change that. Uh, when he gets in the open field, he is quick, and he maintains that speed, which is so important. Like, he's not getting ca caught if he runs uh, and breaks uh, into the open field. Um, he's kind of tiny at 5'9", but he's, you know, 190-something. So I, I just like JV and Hawkins at this point. It is a wasteland, though, and I could see myself, like, picking three or four other running backs at this point based on landing spot because I'm not really tied to any of them. All right, I'm up here. I get one of my favorite picks of the draft, Nico Collins. This is a guy that I've kind of been banging on the table a little bit for this offseason season. He's athletic. He, he doesn't have the tape because he, he opted out and was on Michigan. And if uh, there's any Michigan fans, you just kind of know that their offense was a big old pile of trash. It's where receivers um, go to die for prospects. By also, yeah. <laughs> I like this pick a lot. I he was, was initially committed to Alabama, and uh, I think, actually think he played a year at Alabama as a freshman then transferred to Michigan of all schools for some reason. And this is a guy that he looked incredibly good at the Senior Bowl. I don't think he'll go in the second round, but I think there's a shot when you're comparing him to some of these other receivers, especially if you see a lot of the prototypical X receivers go early, and he's the only one left on the board. So, dude, beginning of the third round, I really like this pick. Yeah, I'm up at 204, and I went with a guy that I don't understand why he's fallen this far. I mean, Chuba Hubbard, if he were to come out after last season, I think he probably would have been a... a a first round pick in a lot of rookie drafts so to get him here at 304 I just think is is a steal obviously he didn't have a good season this past year but um just on a dart throw in the beginning of the third round with the upside that Chuba Hubbard has showed in, in the past I think is a is a steal here and then I'm up again at pick 305 and I took Dwayne Eskridge who is another guy that I just like the ceiling of. He played at Western Michigan. You gotta love the Mac. Um, but he's a guy that is just fantastic with the ball in his hands. He makes people miss in the open field consistently. And he's a guy that I could really see just, you know, the NFL team's just trying to get the ball to him in a lot of different ways. So if, if he falls to the right, you know, offense here, 
um, in the draft that's creative enough. Creative enough. I think it, he he can potentially do some damage with his speed here. I like right, that. Pick. I'm up at 306. This is one of my favorite startup draft picks right now, and that's Khalil Herbert. This is a guy that is one of the only players that has really hardcore risen for me from pro days because the biggest question marks I had about him were his athleticism. He absolutely knocked his pro day out of the park. This dude, he's a really patient runner. Um, I, I almost wish he was a, a smidge bigger because I don't think he plays as big as he actually is, but I think this dude is going to go a little bit earlier than people expect on the draft, and I still think he's going to hover around where he's picked right now at 306, and I really like this pick as a potential running back, and I usually don't like taking running backs around this range. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of upset that he took him because I would have taken him here. Um, at this point, I was just like looking at the board. There's a lot of players I felt like I could have gone between, but... Uh, you got to remember, we're in a tight end premium league, so might as well take the flyer chance on Brevin Jordan becoming something. Um, it's a good pick. It's a good pick there. Yeah. I, I don't, like, I. there's such a huge, huge gap after Kyle Pitts. Um, but as far as the remaining tight ends go, I figured why not just throw, throw a dart at Brevin Jordan. Hopefully it sticks. Okay, well, while we are in a tight end premium league, we're also in a super flex league. <laughs> so I took the next best quarterback available in Kyle Trask. Uh, if you tell me I can get Kyle Trask at, what, 308? I'll definitely take that any day of the week. Um, I, I think some team's just going to take a waiver on him. He's not going to start his rookie year, but I could see a team with an older QB just kind of taking him maybe late second or something, like a team, I don't know off the top of my head, but a team with an older QB maybe grabbing him somewhere in like the second half of the second round. And watching him sit for a year and then seeing if two years from now he can play or next season. So I'll take that. I still like him generally. Um, I know like uh, everyone's kind of low on him. His arm isn't the best arm. But I still like his touch. Uh, what he did against SEC defenses last year. So I'll take that at the end of the third. Alright, and... who'd you waste to pick on at 309? I don't understand that. See, I actually like this pick here. I, I'm going to back Lunas where I can back Lunas. But like, I like this Amari, pick. I like Amari I Rodgers. either. I, I thought I know obviously like people were like oh no shit you had Trevor Lawrence and it was like that conference but I thought he made a lot of plays he was able to like make a lot of plays deep um, he was able to kind of work as that number one receiver for Clemson I, I thought he was pretty good um, and nothing like special obviously like any of those second round guys but if you're telling me at the end of the third if he's sitting there I'm I'd take him yeah I don't necessarily hate it he, he had a good senior bowl. Again, we're talking end of the third, so at this point, like, the statistical hit rates of these players are just, they're so low. Um, yeah, you want to know why it's low? Because you got people taking freaking Amari Rogers with him. That's mean. why. That's mean. It's like, oh, big school, good stats, get him. <laughs> so, I don't think he's that bad. I don't think he's that bad, so, but I so wanted to find you for this Smith. one. We're talking Devontae Smith right there. I heard. He's talking um, about Devontae Smith. <laughs> yeah. um, so, sorry, right. Mar- sorry, Mari Rogers isn't some scrub tight end. Yeah. Pick him at 309. Um, it's, it's like, whatever. Yeah, speaking of a wasted pick, who'd you waste a pick on, Okay, KT? hold on. So, yeah, well, again, <laughs> we're, at this point, we're at this point, it's 310. And I'm texting, like, oh, like, there's so many people that I could choose between tomorrow and Terry. Like, a, there's still, like, three or four running backs I could say um and frank just goes brings him so mean to towards jamar jefferson who i'm picking at at 310 i just i think at 310 like the risk that i'm taking on jamar jefferson who i think like does have the the tangibles that he, he could be a starting running back like might as well just throw another dart at him i i don't really see any of the other guys behind him you know having a better chance at being a relevant player than jamar jefferson so that's why I took him here. I, I was looking at Tamari and Terry, but I don't know. Just just give me Jamar Jeff. I like that pick at three time. I just took Pat Fryermuth. I just you know, I I was gonna take uh Tamari on Terry, but the thing is is that I think that Pat Pat Fryermuth at this point in the draft, it's like the value just kind of matched up for a tight end premium league. I don't really love Pat Fryermuth to be completely honest. I'm gonna talk about Jags. Um, but I did a similar thing with Cole Komet in a couple of leagues last year, just very end of the third round. And I thought that went all right. So I think that Pat Fryermuth, he's a good blocker. He kind of checks a lot of the boxes. 
And it's a better pick than, than Lunas would make in the third round. <laughs> mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jake, wrap, wrap us up here. Yep, I wrapped up this mock draft with Jarrett Patterson, running back from Buffalo. Um, he's a guy that I just like. I think he's going to be a consistent back in the NFL. Never going to be a lead back, but always be part of a committee. I think he holds some some value as like a flex play, a running back two maybe, depending on his situation. But the reason I like him so much is he can pass block, man. He knows how to pass block, and that's going to get him on the field, and that's going to get him touches. Um, also, he's just so strong. Like, a corner or an arm tackle from a defensive lineman, they're not bringing this, this guy down. So, overall, I think he's going to be a you know pretty solid player. I like that pick. All right. That wraps up our mock draft. Um, we have the teams posted below. I don't know if you're going to be able to show that somewhere, G- uh, Frank. Where? Nah, it's fine. Yeah, we there. can move. We can put it in the description. The move. Yeah, maybe, maybe we could yeah. do that. All right. The um, move. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a poll later on Twitter and have people decide uh, a week from now what who they thought was the best uh, drafter. But Frank, you want to take us into the last segment so while we're wrapping up uh, episode thirty-two? Yes. I would love to. So these are a couple things that I was kind of going through in some leagues that I'm in. The first one is Chris Carson. Because Chris Carson, he just got that extension from the Seahawks. It is He is easily one of the weirdest players in fantasy football. Because if you were to look at him from a pure statistical standpoint, A, he hasn't even been as injured as people think, but I guess that's the one major knock against him is he's been injured. But, like, this dude is a super productive running back that no one will even sniff with a first-round pick. God forbid you mentioned first-round pick and Chris Carson in the same sentence. So I kind of wanted to ask you guys, because I've had a tough time valuing this player, a, a couple of questions. The first is, what is his value? That he's, you know, If you had to pick this year, what's his value? The second is, what is his outlook? And third, if you had him, are you buying or selling him? All right, I'll take I'll take this one. I guess. I mean, I am a Chris Carson fan. He's won me a, you know a few championships of, for the, in the past few seasons. Just in not in our league, other leagues, but he's been solid. He's been a very consistent runner. And the thing about this, for dynasty fact, is that this, he got his contract. And I think him resigning in in Seattle was the only place that he could have kept any significant value. Um, just the fact that he's familiar with the offense, his role is defined in this offense. I think Pete Carroll probably wants to get back to a run, more run-first offense um, You know, after how the Seahawks finished this season. Um, so overall, I think his outlook for the next season or, and, or two, I think it was a two-year deal he signed, um, is pretty good. And I think another thing is I would buy him just because, like you said, no one's even considering a first-round pick for this guy. You could probably get him for a later half second-round pick. And for that price, you'll probably get a very solid running back, too, for the next two years. I, I don't think okay. people are going to sell Chris Carson for a later second. I think they're probably going to I think they could. No, because here, here's one thing. Here's one thing real quick. It is a two-year deal, but the Seahawks can get out really easily after one. I do want to give but it's not like the, the money. The money on this deal isn't that significant. Like he's no, not it's not. Making... It's not. Yeah. The real question is, what if you're looking to buy Chris Carson? Because I, I am looking to buy Chris Carson. Possibly, you know, I'm running back needing my draft strategy. Went over in the in the startup strategies video is very anti running back, especially at the top end. If I wanted to buy Chris Carson for draft picks, what should I be looking to to give up for him? Right, the here. only thing I have to say is, like, you, you look at what our mock that we just did, right? I said a later second. Guys that went 210 and 212 are Michael Carter and Kenneth Gainwell. Would you rather have Chris Carson over them? That's my question. Well, first off, I don't think you should be buying Chris Carson unless you're a contender. Definitely. If you're yeah, not a contender, I don't if think I, you should If buy I'm Chris a contending Carson. team and I want Chris Carson... What I, should I've got I an answer. I've got an answer. I value him around Trey Sermon, and Lewis picked him around where I would have picked Trey Sermon. So that means I'd be giving up around 205, 206. Like so a mid second rounder. Yeah. Mid to early second rounder, I would give up for Chris Carson. I'm not giving up an early second for Chris Carson. Uh, I'm more at the 207 to 210 range. I'm more with Jake. Yeah, the, an early, yeah, an the early thing is, though, is that if you're a Chris Carson owner, what is the minimum pick? Like, 
what is the pick that it's going to take to get the deal done? Because obviously everyone wants to give up 210 for Chris Carson, but if you're a halfway decent team and you have Chris Carson, you're not like you're just saying fuck that. Why am I giving I, up if, 210 for a potential RB one? If I owned Chris Carson and someone offered me, I'll say 205 or 206, I think I accept that. I mean, I think 204 is an auto accept. I think 205 and 206 is a fair offer, and I would probably take it as well. That's the point I'm at. By the way, side comment. Uh, sorry to reel from the um, Chris Carson conversation. We got the numbers on the James Conner deal. It's one year, one point two five million. Ooh, oh, yeah, nothing. Nothing. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. Um, um I, I know we were talking right. about that earlier. So but yeah, so. Chris Carson was like borderline RB one last year. He missed a few games. Like I, I feel like two hundred four is probably a fair offer for him. So are you buying or selling him right now? Last last question, and we'll move on to the next one. Depend, depends no, what you no, can I'd get him hold, from. Hold. I'd hold. If, you can, if someone offers you 207, are you accepting or, or declining? I'd for decline 207, 207. I'll, for t- I have Chris Carson, and I'm getting 207. Yeah, you're giving you're getting rid of Chris Carson for 207. No, I'm going to hold at that point. I think hold, but if, if I could even just get up to 206, I think I'd say yes. What if you were a rebuilding team? Even as a rebuilding team, you get to, you're holding? No, rebuilding team. I'm I'm selling. I'm selling that. Cause I because at that pick, look who look just look who went at 206, 207. Diami Brown, Kellen Mond, Elijah Moore. Like those are guys that could be you know starters in your team for years to come. Chris Carson oh, yeah. is great, but you know he only has what two years more two years left max. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, max. I guess one last question before I get off this because I find him so interesting is that if you were looking to swap Chris Carson not for a pick but for a player. Is there a good player that you would look to swap him for? Is it any player, or are we just talking running backs? No, any player. Just any player, any sort of prospect, any player. Like, if you had Chris Carson, because maybe the move isn't to sell him for draft picks. If you're looking to sell Chris Carson, how are you going to go about it? Are you going to look for a late second, or are you going to try and swap him for a potential prospect? Because I can mention someone I was thinking about, is what about a Michael Pittman from the Colts, the, kind of related to our next segment, because he... He's a dude that I think has a potential value, maybe a Paris Campbell, and you might be able to even get more on top of that for someone like a Paris Campbell who I think that his perceived value is less than Michael Pittman. I was going to say, the, one of the first things that came in my mind was kind of those receivers that like weren't crazy their rookie year. Like If, if I'm a rebuilding team especially, and I can trade Chris Carson for a chance to like Ruggs, or if somehow I can get Rager uh, for Carson, I'm pulling that. Like I, I don't know if did they rent for sure except but i'd say generally their value is around kind of like that mid maybe early second so if i can get one of those two for chris carson like if, if a contender needs a piece that'll help them win right now and can't wait on that rookie i would do that if if i could get the owner of chris carson and accept paris campbell straight up for chris carson i'm smashing except like so quickly i'm out on paris in campbell. terms of in terms of you giving up paris campbell yeah i'd give up paris campbell okay. for chris carson so quickly with Michael Pittman, it's more. You saying Michael Pittman makes. I, I feel like those two are probably around equal value. Paris Campbell, though, I'll see you later. Well, Paris I was Campbell. saying if you if 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 someone's offering like I think you would get a little bit more for just Paris. Like it would be like Paris Campbell and a third maybe this year, like a, an early mid third. I probably still like want that. Chris Carson, but I don't. Well, so you're talking about the the Colts wide receivers. You want to just move yeah, let's to that just move point? into them. Yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. So, what what were your thoughts on on this Colts offense? So every single time I'm in in our league, I own Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell, and I'm looking at this team. And last year, this was an offense that, yes, it was more of a run first offense, and Naheem Hines took a lot of the passing work. But let's not act like this is an offense that hasn't had some really nice success, and especially at the end of last year, really put up some great numbers. And when you look at this team, every single one of their players seems to be on the decline aside from Jonathan Taylor. And I guess Carson Wentz at the same time. But my my whole thing is is that I think that this is going to be a, an average passing offense, which that means there's going to be fantasy producers coming from this passing offense. Is there value on this team at the risk? Is, is Paris Campbell the buy? Michael Pittman? T.Y. Hilton? Maybe one of the tight ends? Maybe it is Naheem Hines. Like, I feel like there's value in investing in this offense for cheap. 
Who do you guys think it is? Okay, can I, can I ask you guys a question quick? Well, first Go off, ahead. to answer yours, the guy I like the most in this is Michael Pittman. Um, and I'm guessing Jake and JT probably feel the same, but I'm not fully sure. I do want to no, ask this. I've got someone completely different. Okay, I'm interested to hear that. Uh, but do, I'm, I'm excluding, well. obviously, Taylor. I'm excluding, obviously, Taylor. Taylor's in his own tier. Um, if you had to say, out of those three receivers, Campbell, Hilton, and Pittman, this isn't dynasty value. This is for next season, so more like in a contender's uh, interest. Who do you think has the best, or how would you rank those three in terms of like who has the best season, Pittman, like Hilton, numbers wise Cam- and uh, fantasy? Pitt- Pittman, Hilton, Campbell. I mean, I think that's the consensus answer. I don't think it's necessarily wrong. I also don't think they necessarily don't like they pass on a wide receiver. I think they might take a wide receiver in this draft class um, to to add to this you know unit that's they already kind of full. Um, just the only because... thing though is that they they have so many holes. Like they need a left tackle. Their their defense has got some holes. Like I do agree with that, but it, it's because here here's the point I was gonna make. If you think it's Ty wacky. Hilton, if you think Ty Hilton can be like the kind of most productive receiver, whether it be him or Hilton, I mean him or Pittman. But if you lean Hilton, he's you can get him for dirt cheap right now as a contender. Like I own him, it would not take much at all to get him. Like, what right. would it Lewis, take? What draft pick? This Lewis, I'll give you a 2023 third round pick. See, I would take a third. I'd prefer an earlier year. I also, I'll give and you I know a 2023 that 2023 third round pick. I also know that your team is like insane. Um, Lotus, I'll give you a 2023 third round pick. Let's get that live Maybe. trade. <laughs> live trade going on. Like, right. I know I would definitely take GT, any you're third. Muted. Oh, sorry, my bad. I was saying, let's get the live trade going for the pod. Just a live trade right here. <laughs> no, JT, you said you had someone completely yeah, different. I'm yeah. curious to hear he, oh, what you were thinking. I'm firing in here. Boys, this person's essentially free, and he will be the one that gains the most value easily. Because I'm worried uh, about Pittman. I'm worried about Paris Campbell. I'm worried about T.Y. Hilton. Jonathan Taylor, I think, is fine. Although, like, he could even lose value. Are you about to say, time like, time. Jack Doyle? No. No, that's even wrong. It's Mo Alley Cox. Mo Ali oh, Cox oh my is my gosh. buy here. He's free. He's free. And I think, you know, Jack Doyle's had some injury problems before. And Mo Ali Cox. The Doyle. <laughs> Mo Ali Cox. When Mo Ali Cox was healthy and he was getting some attention from the, the Colts, um, you know, coaches and front office, Mo Ali Cox is a solid tight end. I mean, obviously, he's still going to be in that kind of wasteland zone, even if he does get that starting role. But, like, he is literally free right now, and you, you could get him off waivers probably in most leagues. I'm going on sleeper right now. He's only rostered in a third of the leagues on sleeper, so that means in two-thirds of the leagues he's free. Otherwise, you could probably get him for a fourth. Free, essentially. Um, and, you know, at, at the end of the day, he's someone that could be worth a late second, early third. You're just making – like, it, it's no risk. It's a no How risk How many return. seasons has he been in the league for? Four. He was a basketball player before then, though. Yeah, he took VCU to a Final yeah. Four. He's yeah. a because I actually he really like that, JT, because if there's any position where a guy can come out of freaking nowhere, it's tight end. And he kind of did last year, but then they just kind of ignored him again. He was on a tear for a few games, um, and then I think he got hurt. Out of curiosity. Kind of yeah. Dude, I love Mo Alley Cox. I actually really like yeah. Mo Alley Cox. He's 6'5", 267. Like, he's a big man. He, he's a, <laughs> yeah, he, he's a big-ass dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, he fully played power forward in the NCAA tournament. Like, yeah. he was a beast. <laughs> um, He'll catch the ball and dunk on you. Like, <laughs> yeah, he would. Um, but another thing for you is, I mean, Marlon Mack, obviously, you know, people kind of expected him to share the load last year, um, at least in the beginning before Jonathan Taylor took over and he got hurt in week one, I think it was. So that kind of obviously accelerated Jonathan Taylor's, you know, you know, development yeah. and, 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 and touches and all that, but they did resign, uh, Marlon Mack. Do you guys think there's any value in Marlon Mack? I'm just curious to get your opinion. Torn, torn oh, Achilles, I thought you were saying that Marlon from, Mack had value. No, no, I'm not think, saying he is. Uh, I, was, I had here. the clown image loaded up. <laughs> torn, torn, oh, it's on the yo, screen. Torn, torn, torn Achilles for a running back <laughs> is brutal. Like I don't remember if you guys remember a couple years ago, Dante was it Dante Foreman. As a rookie, he looked pretty promising, actually. He had, like, decent draft capital. He had, like, a decent amount of trade value in Dynasty. He tore his Achilles. He couldn't do shit since then. Like, for a running back to tear your Achilles, 
That's brutal. I don't know if he's better than Jordan Wilkins right now. And I definitely have Hines valued more than him. He's true. So he's a jag. At most, he's the third most valuable back on that team. And then him or Jordan Wilkins, I don't know. Because uh, as a running back, we have to pr- always make... Sorry, I accidentally hit my laptop. We have to always make like cuts every two seconds. I, I On a torn Achilles, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Let's, let's just dump... Marlon Mack. I'm I'm done with Marlon Mack. It'd take a lot for him to be relevant for me. But you guys want to move on to our last segment? We'll try and uh, speed run this one through. Um, we're talking the players that are most likely going to get hurt by the NFL draft. Like, their value is going to drop. Um, also, side note, you could also say players that you want to buy before the NFL draft, if that's the way you want to go, too. No, let's let's do that next episode. All right, all right. Let's ne- just we'll see players we'll that are going to get hurt. All right, players that are going to get hurt. suspense. Uh, who wants to lead us off? Whoever wants to jump in, go ahead. Who's going to take a hit? Someone else go first. I got to think. All right, I'll go. I'll go. I, I think it's Mike Kosicki. He's the one that I'm going to try and sell. I'm not convinced that Kyle Pitts ends up there, but even if Kyle Pitts doesn't end up on the Dolphins, I'm kind of out by Mike Kosicki at this point. Like, it, it took a lot, um, you know, like Preston Williams to get hurt, Devontae Parker to be hurt for Mike Kosicki to really be relevant a couple years ago, and last year he didn't look, like, all too great either. And so if you're telling me even if they don't add the likes of Kyle Pitts, but they do add a Jalen Waddle or a Devontae Smith or any kind of wide receiver who's going to be taking away attention from Mike Kosicki, he's someone that I think is going to get hurt by this draft. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of between two guys. I, I, I want to can, can I say both or should I yeah, just go, pick ahead. One? go ahead so two guys I think are in interesting positions I still like them because they're both young and good the two that came to mind were Jalen Rager and Hollywood Brown um I can Hollywood see Brown was one that I was gonna say yeah I can see both of those teams drafting a receiver in the first round to kind of take over like I could see Eagles at 12 taking like a waddle if he falls to them or like a Smith if he falls to them and then I could see Baltimore at the end of the first taking like a Bateman or like a Marshall or something. The only thing I'm going to say is, and the reason I'm kind of on the fence about the Hollywood one is I think if they add a legit wide receiver opposite him, it could help him just That's... because like he's a guy, he's a guy that is in my opinion, more of that, you know, deep threat, you know, over the middle kind of guy that is a nice wide receiver two on your team. So if they could add a, tr- a pure wide receiver one, it could actually help him in my opinion. That yes, my but their passing big. attack is going to have to improve next year to support two receivers and Mark Andrews. But that's another thing is also just sell all all Baltimore except Dobbins. So it's it's fine. Yeah, no, because that's the thing. It, like. If, if it was, like, a good passing attack, I completely agree with you. Where I think Hollywood actually benefits with being the number two receiver. But how would that passing attack is, at least I'm just basing it off of last season, I'm kind of like, yeah, about it. Uh, I kind of agree with you to a point, Lewis, but I also think, like, what Jake said, like, you add that kind of alpha wide receiver, it could help both of them, really. And not only that, but I think that's kind of baked into their value currently. Like, there was a point in time where a lot of people thought the Eagles were going to get Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith up there. So, you know, I think people kind of expect Jalen Rager to have someone else opposite of him that is going to have high draft capital. So, And it's the same I thing with like Rager, by the way. I think Rager yeah. benefits from being the two. It's just how is that passing attack going to look like? Yeah, it's something that I think you could spin either way, but I, I definitely don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that they could definitely get hurt by this. Um, Frank, you got anyone? This one's going to come as kind of a shocker, but here's something that um, I guess I'll just say it. I, I didn't really want to because it's going to come out in my mock draft, but I think Carolina Panthers receivers, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, one of them, both of them, by them taking Devontae Smith. I think that this is a team that um, could look to just go most impactful player available, whether that's defense by picking up Micah Parsons, I can understand. But they spent an entire draft class all on defense. I think that defense was... Their problems was more that they were young, not that they weren't talented. I think that we could see this Panthers team, you know, that they, they pick up Sam Darnold. Yeah, they could pick up a quarterback, why can't they pick up Devontae Smith and really get that true alpha number one ass receiver 
to, to put the, the, the Panthers from being a good offense, like, oh, yeah, the Panthers are pretty good to where if you add Devontae Smith onto that offense, all of a sudden you're saying, holy crap, how the hell do we stop this team? Well, I My. do agree Devontae Smith and that offense would be insane. I don't know. I, th- I think DJ Moore can be that alpha one. Um, yeah. Not in the well, way like of like Robbie a Hopkins, Anderson, maybe. but in the way of kind of like a Keenan Allen number one. Like he's not going to like be like this alpha build, but he's going to put up numbers. And then I don't I just think I, I see them getting a tackle, but I, I don't think it's out of their realm of possibilities for them to get Devontae Smith because then that would just make their offense insane. And they're pretty much saying like, yo, Sam Darnold, we're giving you all of this. It's definitely out there and it's unexpected, but I think that it's a lot more likely than people realistically think. How about that? That's all right. right. I've got my, my scorching hot stuff coming at you guys. I think that means they're just getting rid of Curtis Samuel to replace him with a player similar to the likes of Curtis Samuel. Like, he's going to be the Curtis Samuel role on that team if that's the case. When, when we look at receivers like uh, DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, the average depth of target is way, way, way farther down the field than the likes of Devontae Smith when Devontae Smith was in college. Like, it's not... They're not the same player. Like, the, Devontae Smith is nowhere near the same player as the likes of Robbie Anderson or DJ Moore. They're, they're very different with how they play. And I just think if the Panthers do that, they're essentially just upgrading over Curtis Samuel a little bit. Like, that's all see, I, I think, see, guys. I think some of those Curtis Samuel uh, shorter routes, you're going to see McCaffrey in a lot of those. Also a possibility. I just think if you're going to go wide receiver, you're basically, if you take Devontae Smith, that's what you're doing. Jake, you got anything for us? I mean, I have more obvious ones. I mean, Drew Locke. Yeah. Yeah, Let's be honest. (laughs) Uh, Let's be honest. I mean, Jimmy G. Let's be honest. Cam Newton. Cam Cam Newton. A question. Are you guys, if you guys own Cam Newton right now, are you selling him ASAP before the draft? I mean, no, you're not going to get any. You're not going to, yeah. yeah. No, they're, they're gonna, the, the thing is, I think that Cam Newton is like a great bridge quarterback. So I think you'll get a, a pretty good season out of him. Um, okay. um, some of the m- other ones that I, I thought of was, I think Mike Williams in, in, in L.A. Is, is a guy that I don't know how people are valuing him right, right about now just because he is tied to Justin Herbert. But I think I'm out on him. I think they're going to take a wide receiver as well. Um, and same in Cincinnati. Um, I think Tyler Boyd is a guy that's going to be on the outs here just because I do think that there's a chance that they reunite Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow here. And um, that would be very bad for Mr. Boyd. So so would you sell Boyd uh, if you had him right now? Are any of yes. these guys current sales? So I agree with you, Wood. I would be selling Boyd. Because yeah, I also I only think, think Boyd... Higgins is going to get better. Yep, so I, I think Boyd's a good sell. He's still a relatively young wide receiver, and I still think someone will pay probably a second-round pick for him. So it, if you can sell him before they take Jamar Chase or whoever, Waddle, or any of those guys, I, I think it's a good move. I do want to say one other person before we wrap this up real quick. Uh, someone sneaky who still kind of has value, a decent amount, but uh, could lose it all is Jared Goff. Um, I don't think it's yeah. impossible that the Lions don't take like I, I think it's definitely possible the Lions could take a quarterback there. And even if they don't, like Vegas, everyone has the Lions coming in like last place. And if they don't, they're still probably going to be a top five pick, which means Jared Goff is probably getting replaced next year even. So I might as well just try and coop as much, recoup as much value as you can while he's still relevant. That's my one. That's actually Yo, a good one. That's a really good one. I think the Packers should trade up again and just take Trey Lance. Just all the quarterbacks. All right. I, I think this <laughs> I'm is a kidding, good spot. I'm kidding. This is a good spot to wrap it up. Uh, we'll have the opposite players that we think you should buy before the draft um, next week, uh, along with you know our usual segments. We'll come up with more stuff for you guys. But that's episode 32 in the books. Thank you guys for uh, listening. Like, rate, review, comment, I don't know, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. Uh, again, thank you, everyone. come draft night to us. Draft yeah, night. we'll have our live stream. Live stream. Too.